The Swan. This is a Fox reality show from the early 2000s. Wait, no, this is this is directed by Wes Anderson. Oh, this is the last Wes Anderson thing on Netflix. That's what this is. I really thought we were reviving The Swan. That controversial show where they won plastic surgery at the end of it. Does anybody remember that? Is it just me? Am I the only one that still remembers those shitty reality shows from TV? TV years past. TV seasons past. Yes. Um, so, this is the last one that I've watched. And yes, it has the same people. And it's still a roll doll adaptation and all of that stuff. And it has audio description on Netflix. Kudos. Congratulations. Um, and I have been, I don't know. I don't know. There's something very interesting about what uh, Anderson has done with these little shorts. And I do like it. I think they'd be really create. I'm sure they're really um, fully like creative and interesting to see. I know that... Uh, they give us a lot of introduction up front about how the how each one of these is presented and how the actors often um, talk directly to the audience, narrate so, as they might in a play, uh, and we actually get to see sort of the stage hands uh, or the the run crew or whatever uh, come on and off and bring on set pieces and remove set pieces and have little like trap doors that they can come through it. And, and it sounds all really re interesting, uh, conceptually. And I, I wish I could spend more time just immersing myself in just the design that Anderson has chosen to do these, these in, um, because it sounds like it would be really fun, but the story of the swan was just, I, I was just so bored. It's only 19 minutes long, and I was just like, I think I fell asleep five times. <laughs> I, <was> like, <laughs> I went to the train, and I hope the train doesn't pass over, man. I'm just thinking to myself that the train is, I was like, oh, what is this about? <laughs> like, what is this? We're up at the top of the mountain, and I was like, what is going on in this? It's, I don't know. This is the one Roald Dahl adaptation where I'm pretty certain Roald Dahl was, like, high on some combination of, like, mushrooms and, like, LSD. Like, at the same time, he wrote this. And then Anderson was reading it and was like, I guess I'll adapt this. No one else is going to. Yeah, let's do it. So, uh, he came up with a swan. And Anderson's quirkiness and Dahl's quirkiness sort of merged together into this weird sort of thing where I found it more interesting that I think in this one they use the stage hands more than they have in, in any of the other shorts. And I loved the watching them, like listening to them pop in and out, you know, like the, the actor's actual time to narrate what these unnamed crew members were doing, you know, like they popped out and they like swapped something and they left. They just slinked out through the, through a little, trapdoor, you know? I just, I find that kind of stuff really interesting, but I didn't think this was very interesting at all. Um, I just, I think Anderson just picked, the, you know, these sort of bizarre uh, little roll doll stories and adapted them, and now I kind of, I answered the question that I had before when I started watching all of them, I found that there were more than just the wonderful world of Henry Sugar about why... Netflix was promoting the wonderful world of Henry Sugar, but not the other three. Like, why is it that we were hearing so much about Henry Sugar being a potential Oscar nominee for Best Short? And I was like, but there are four of them. Oh. Oh, the others are not very... Oh, okay. Rock Catcher was fine. Poison was... It was It was an interesting... I'll give it a B-. minus. I mean, it was... It was it was what it was, but this is... I didn't need to see this. <laughs> I feel like I had already... I think The Swan also, like, it just it hurt that it was the last one. It's easily, of Dahl's stories, the worst of the four. 
that are adapted. That's that's saying a lot because poison is weird. But um <laughs> it's just a weird story to, to to be like, yeah, this would make a great short film. Okay. Um Yeah, this is the least interesting story that of the four. Um and uh I just it just was the last that I watched. But if it had been the first, I don't know if I would have appreciated still the quirkiness of it, but I think the quirkiness wears off also. So I'm trying to like think of, can I give it quirkiness points as if I had seen this before I saw anything else? And I think there is a little bit of that in there too. Like stylistically, I think what Wes Anderson is doing here is the same that he did with the others. And I think that makes it interesting uh, as like, sort of an experiment in in film and in cinema and uh broadening anderson as a director same things that i've said about the others this is true and it has to be true it can't just not be true because it was the third one that i saw because other people would watch these in different orders so it has to be true of all of them since they're all shot relatively the same so i would give that note to this film as well but uh, again, this is a short film. I don't want to spend too much time talking about a film that's only 19 minutes long. So that's where I'm going to cap that review off at. Uh, my least favorite, personally. And um, audio description is very interesting. As I said, they uh, I got to know what the stagehands were doing, which is uh, fun. I thought that was fun that there are people moving props around on stage. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know, I just, maybe I just don't get that usually in, in film, uh, audio description, but, uh, definitely added to the quirkiness and individuality of this piece. So, I'm gonna give The Swan a C plus. Uh, yeah, it's my least favorite of, of all of the, the newly adapted doll shorts. So, anyway, I've now reviewed all of them. Hopefully you enjoyed the reviews. Uh, I reviewed the last three uh, sort of slowly over the course of time, but I I got all of them done eventually. And uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And uh, you can go to my website, MacTheMovieGuy.com. You can follow me on X, Threads, or Instagram at MacTheMovieGuy. You can go to the audio description project, adp.acb.org. It'll let you know what is audio description and where you can watch it. And you can go to the adna.org. That's the adna.org. It'll let you know who's narrating your favorite films and television series. That's it for me today. I will watch something else and see you guys on the other side.